Representative of the CARICOM Secretariat, Ms. Jennifer Britton. Representative of the CAREB Network Operators. Who is that, Mr. Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, representatives of the CTU, Mr. Bevel Wooding. Sister agencies, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, on behalf of the ministry and all of our partners, welcome you here today to the first day of the Internet Week 2017. Uh, this is a very happy day for us. It is the first one in Guyana, and we, we hope that this is the beginning of many more Internet Weeks for, uh, in, in the years to come. The genesis of this is the commitment, certainly on our side, to make sure that uh, the access to the Internet is as wide as possible and access to as many citizens as possible. One of the things, however, that we have discovered in our research is that we are very good front-end users. To participate in, the, in Guyana and, also, and, and as a region as a whole, if we're going to participate in that internet space, it is critical that we understand how that works, critical that we understand how that's governed. Um, especially in countries like Guyana, who, who are determined to use access to internet and the management of the internet as part of a, a fundamental pillar for us in terms of national advancement and uh, economic development. If I give you an example of what happens, if we want dot Guyana, just for the sake of conversation, in the interest of branding and the interest of intellectual property, it will cost us, as a start, $10 million to do that. Now, I make this case because that price was come to without an intervention or a conversation with us or any consultation. We simply weren't in the room when the decision was made to charge that kind of money. If I want to use Dot Lance as a case in point, it's going to cost me 500,000 US dollars to start. And again, I'm not in the room as a Caribbean person, as a Caribbean practitioner, when these decisions are being made. So decisions are being made in our name, we are not there. Policies are taken without our knowledge every day, and we are not there. So the idea now is to start the process, along with our colleagues who share a similar view, of trying to see how we get in the room, how we are part of those discussions, how we are about access. ICANN and other agencies talk all the time about reaching out to us. We are the next five billion in this hemisphere. So one of the things that must happen is that we must be able to participate fully that either if you're going to reach out to us, this is the way that we think you're going to do it. So that is the objective of this week, is to share, is to learn, is, is to provide knowledge for you to be, become a little more aware of how these things work. How is the internet governed? What are the policies behind its governance? How is security handled? How is the physical infrastructure managed? All of that information will be shared, uh, will be shared during this week. We will also speak about what we do in the ministry to further internet governance, to further the, the, the propagation of ICT. All of those things you're going to hear during this week. So, and again, the objective, education, learning. We hope that when you come out of this meeting, of these next five days, it is with a greater awareness of how the internet works in all its facets, whether front end or whether back end, the idea must be that we must, as citizens of Guyana, and by extension the region, have a better understanding of how we access the internet and the role that we play, especially when we take into consideration the sort of goals that we have as countries in the region in terms of our development and advancement. Thank you very much. Those are my opening remarks. Since I was appointed this morning as well as chair of ceremonies, so I was informed. I'm not sure about the appointment. <laughs> the form. So um, I think we should hear from some of our partners um, to explain specifically some of the things that they do. So um, I'm going to start with uh, CTU, and I'm going to ask Mr. Bevel Wooding to step forward. Thank you, Bevel. Thank you, Mr. Hines. Uh, good morning, Minister uh, Honorable Catherine Hughes, 
my colleagues from uh, various internet organizations, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. Uh, it is my pleasure to, to be part of this, I have to say, inaugural Guyana Internet Week. And um, as many of you may be wondering, why would we need an entire week to talk about the internet and the internet in Guyana? Many of us are familiar with the challenges of the internet, the speed, the price, the lack of choice, but not many of us are aware of what power we have to make a difference. And one of the things that we hope to do, and I, uh, throughout this week, throughout this day, and um, the reason that we have so many representatives from so many organizations present here, is that there is a very interesting development taking place in the region that you would um, recognize as the days go along. And that is a collaboration for the greater good. And the CTU, and I bring you greetings from the Secretary General, Ms. Bernadette Lewis, and the team at the Caribbean Telecommunications Union Secretariat, uh, we have been working over the past several years to bring about new levels of collaboration uh, at a, at, across the region, but also at a national level to make sure that stakeholders understand the power that we all wield in terms of transforming uh, the internet and creating opportunities based on internet-related technologies. Uh, many of you will be hearing terms over the coming days, terms like bottom-up approach, multi-stakeholderism, and all of these things really point to uh, a very important and fundamental aspect of how the internet was formed and how it continues to grow. And that is people volunteering, people working, people researching, people advocating for the kind of internet environment that is most relevant to indigenous needs. And for many of us, we think about the internet in terms of, of somewhere else. We want to get access to the internet because somewhere out there, there is something uh, that is of value to us. But increasingly, many across the region are understanding that there is also something called the local internet, where we can use the same internet technologies to access local services, whether they are government services or whether it is entrepreneurs um, using the power of the mobile devices and the hopefully increasing access to broadband services to create new products and services that meet local needs. And that is one of the things that the, the CTU has been working with its member states to ensure happens increasingly across the region. And that is one of the reasons why we are so glad that, um, that Ghana has taken the, the time, the, 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 the investment in creating this forum where we can begin an entirely new conversation about what the internet means for us. What does it mean in very practical local terms? What are some of the very fundamental issues of infrastructure, cost, network resilience, network security, giving vulnerable groups access to opportunities that they would not otherwise have had without technology? Groups that don't have a voice or a say in who sets internet infrastructure where? or who determines the pricing and the access and the education that gives our children and their children an opportunity to deal with and step into careers that don't even exist today. Where does that conversation begin? It begins in rooms like these. It begins with people like us working out in a very practical, very collaborative way, the kind of internet environment we want to see. But of course, as I, I, I say often and everywhere, the, the technology, the internet, is merely a servant to a larger, greater development goal. And that's the goal that we have for our country and the goal that we have for our region to really take its place in the world. And so it is my pleasure to congratulate uh, the minister and her team for staging this event, but it's also my pleasure to welcome you all to what we hope will be a very, very progressive and advancing set of conversations this week around what does internet development mean for Guyana and how can we practically um, implement solutions and strategies that take us to the next level. With that, I thank you. Thank you, Bevel. Our next partner is the Caribbean Network Operators Group, and I'd like to ask Mr. Stephen Lee to come to the podium. I think here in Guyana, we are at the cusp of change when it comes to harnessing the internet for development. I come from a lesser known part of the internet ecosystem. Lance mentioned it, the numbers community. And what I will say is that simply put, any machine connecting to the internet needs a number. So we're very much 
pretty important, I would say. And of course, we work with that side, our clients are ISPs, but human beings can't really remember all of these numbers. And that's why we are always mirrored with the names part of the internet, which Albert spoke to just now. And what I would say is that engagements like this, they really are part of our activities in LACNIC. Our core activity is the distribution of those numbers, but we are also very much dedicated to outreach, to capacity building, and to encouraging bottom-up open dialogue with internet communities, because we believe that this model is the best model in order to find real solutions and in order to shape the type of internet we want here. So to shape the Guyana vision of the internet, we need to come together for that. I had come to Guyana back in July of this year um, with my CEO. And of course, as part of that visit, um, we had done some stats. And uh, of course, one of the things that we had seen is that the availability of a protocol called IPv6 to end users is below 1% of total internet traffic. I know for some people, they may not know what I'm talking about. But my point is that those statistics sometimes, they are not complete, or statistics are always not faithful because it always depends on when a development happens and a reporting happens. What I came to learn is that there's a lot of activity here in Guyana. We have representatives from the University of Guyana coming out to LACNIC meetings. We have an internet society chapter, a church, <laughs> about to be launched uh, pretty soon here. We have, as one of the few Caribbean governments, the government of Guyana, well represented at the Government Advisory Committee of the GAC. And then when I look at news from other sources, such as Civic, which is an online ICT group, I see the wonderful developments by the ministry in terms of the minister's uh, defense of the new telecommunications bill, cybercrime law, I see that there is a lot going on in terms of a hackathon, a second edition has to come. I know that Guyana is really at the cusp of change here. And what I would like to simply say is that all of this, what I truly believe, all of this is really possible when we come together in these spaces, when we share our ideas. And it's not about the internet org speaking to you and just telling you about what we think. It's really about you giving us your ideas and your feedback, and we can actually, as the theme says, build a Guyanese internet collectively, because the internet, for me, development of the internet happens when we have people, we have technology, and we have business come at crosswords, and the real underpinning of that is when we have these conversations in a multi-stakeholder fashion. So without further ado, I'd like to thank the ministry once again for having me. I look forward to having this event with you. Um, please know that I'm at your service at any time, and I do wish you a pleasant rest of the morning. At the end of 2015, a very dear friend called and said that um, I'm about to be offered or appointed the, uh, she's about to be appointed to the portfolio of the Ministry of Public Telecommunications with specific focus on the development of ICT in Guyana. So after swaying for a bit, I said, well, yes, this is, this is wonderful and I'm Sign me up. Um, what we have seen since then, the, the ministry was created and the programs have been developed. And I must say that we've seen quite an explosion of ICT-related activities, whether, whether sponsored uh, by the ministry itself or other partners but you're seeing the innovation coming out and the creativity flowing and stuff. So where we are today is a far, far cry from where we would have been five, six years ago in terms of the activity here, there's a recognition. Um, I think for the first time we have, we have a champion 
who will go out there and, and, and argue for the industry, argue, you know, argue his cause, and, and has an understanding of the role ICT can potentially play in Guyana in terms of economic advancement uh, and national development as a whole, uh, you know, as, a, as a strong cross-cutting component uh, of all the productive sectors, all the social sectors. Uh, so really, and I think a lot of us can testify to that in this room in terms of how far we've gone uh, so far, and we have a lot to do, and we have, you know, many steps to take, and I think that is uh, in no small part due to our, to certainly our lead in the ministry, and ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the Minister of Public Telecommunications, Honorable Captain James. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. You know, Lance doesn't always tell the whole story. So I want to start by making a, a slight correction. He was absolutely right when he said that for many, 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 many years, because I come from the private sector, Lance would be running his mouth off talking about all the things that was not happening in the ICT area in Guyana. So the conversation more went like, hi Lance, you know all that complaining that you've been doing? Now you have an opportunity to fix it. And therefore, today we have Lance as a very instrumental and important uh, part of the Ministry of Public Telecommunications. We have deliberately in our sessions this week tried to be low on formality. Why we're doing that is because I really want and we want these sessions to be very, very interactive. We don't want anyone sitting in the audience to think that there's a question that they can't ask because it might reflect the fact that they don't know about a particular uh, subject. And that's really the, the nexus of what we're hoping to achieve this week. The Ministry of Public Telecommunications has the mandate to put forward and implement the, the focus of the government of Ghana, which more or less recognizes that as we develop our ICT capacity, that in itself is how we feel we can transform Guyana. And so speaking honestly as a citizen, we have tried many things for many years and we aim quite reach where we want to reach. And therefore, our focus is on showing the private sector community, the ICT community, the university, young entrepreneurs that we know are already working hard, but what we're recognizing is that we're all in these silos doing our own thing. And so the ministry wants to bring everybody together. And our focus is on a few main pillars. The first pillar we recognize is improving the access to the internet across the length and breadth of Ghana. We recognize that because of our size, we're greater than the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Scotland together. And so we recognize that we have, just because of our geography, many areas that are cut off from the city. And so when you talk about a digital divide, in Guyana, it is not talk, it is real. We have people on a small coast that have more opportunities and more access than an individual in a small indigenous community in our interior. So the first thing we have is that we're committed to doing is making sure most of Guyana has better access to secure and safe internet. And because of that, we have first of all uh, connected 94 high schools. We started off by making sure that in their ICT labs and in the administration block, we have uh, access to the internet. And then the other thing we decided and recognized that we needed to do was to create ICT hubs in communities where we know people did not have the luxury of DSL at home. And therefore, especially for the area of education, 
young people, students being able to go to the, a safe space, an ICT hub, do their research, complete homework assignments, and of course, in the area of telemedicine, putting infrastructure in place whereby ministries could actually connect with health centers, with education offices throughout the length and breadth of Guyana. And of course, a very important arm is the possibilities for in entrepreneurial activities. So we've been saying we don't even want to use, as uh, my colleagues are, are sharing, we don't want to use the internet just for the WhatsApp and the chat. We have serious business and serious work to do when it comes to how Guyana is able to use uh, the facilities and the technologies to move forward. In our country, we recognize that this covers and cuts across all sectors. I've mentioned education, I've mentioned health, but also in agriculture. One of the things that we're going to be doing in a few short months is bringing to Guyana a vision of the opportunities in e-agriculture. And that's the next main intervention that we're going to be doing as a ministry. So really, this week's activity recognizes that in the area of ICT development, we have strides that we need to make and we need to make them fast. And that is why I'm very happy that we've had my colleagues from ICANN, from the Internet Society, from LATNIC, from CARIBNOG, from the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, ARIN, I hope I've listed them all, but they are essential and key to us being able to share the foundation of how this internet works, the areas that we are falling behind, not only as a country, but I've been able to benefit from a great relationship with many of these organizations, and most importantly, from the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. So we're doing this on a national level, but these approaches are being manifested on a regional level. And therefore, for some of the international conferences that the ITU are hosting, that quite often, because we're small economies, we're not able to go and represent ourselves, and as Lance identified, have a voice in pricing, in how it works. We are already at a regional level recognizing that we have to work together. And I'm happy to say that we are getting support also from CARICOM. I see an important partner in Jennifer Britton sitting in the room. So we're trying to make sure that we're creating a platform that we can really play this game that this game in terms of developing apps, moving citizens forward, expanding the developmental agenda of our country and other countries, that we are in on the game, that we can jump and miss some of the steps because we're looking at examples and things that worked in other parts of the world that are similar to us. So this whole week is a sharing of information and I know that there are several individuals that are coming for specific um, discussion areas that are relevant or related to their work. I'd like to mention that our program is online at the Ministry of Public Telecommunications website. And I think that uh, our community, our ICT community, have been sharing that information. So I really want people to come and to participate and to ask and to engage these gentlemen. They have come, they have given a week of their time. I cannot thank you enough for the support that you are bringing to us here in Guyana. Now, I want to close by saying that in recent times, the sustainable development goals have expanded to include goal number nine, which talks about access to the internet and broadband connectivity as a human right. 
And that is why, as a government, we are strong on in, ensuring that we bring that access to every length and breadth of Guyana. But it comes with responsibilities, as everything does. And so, in closing, I want to say, please join us on this exciting journey of showing the rest of the world that in Guyana and in our territories in the Caribbean, we are a serious player. And for too long, we have been dealing with a lot of the challenges of development of small island states, insufficient funding, lack of resources, but really the internet gives us a huge opportunity to be developers and to be innovators. And it is in that context that we are sharing our uh, information and we are sharing how we can work together to realize all that we have said. So without um, saying much more, I want to welcome the discussions. I want to say, come forward, participate, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, because we're going to be doing some serious stuff when it comes to promoting ICT in Guyana. Thank you very much. Uh, this uh, brings us to the end of the first session uh, uh, today. Uh -huh.